Hello, everyone. My guest today is Yoav Predor. He's been deployed, deeply involved in the relationship between business and technology from the early years of the web. He began the entrepreneurial stage of his career as part of the founding team of OMG ILI and later as co-founder and CEO of Bazilla, which he's working on today and which has become Israel's leading social listening and social research company. He currently serves as the company's chairman of the board. He's also a shareholder and board member at Bazilla's sister company, webhose.io, and spends most of his time working closely with companies on all aspects of the customer experience. Yoav, are you ready to take us to the top? Yep, let's all right. go. All right, tell us about Bazilla. What's the company do and, and what's the you know business model? How do they make money? Bazilla is in, into social listening. Uh, it's a social listening company. Um, the, the concept is that uh, companies, all kinds of companies, uh, need to listen to what people are saying in order to learn um, all about themselves, their ecosystems, and their business. Um, uh, the technology behind Bazilla is uh, crawling technology, crawling unstructured information from social networks, from forums and blogs and uh, news uh, editorial sites. Um, all of that is structured and brought into the system. The, the model is a SaaS model and also a, a professional services model. We do research that is an analysis of this information in order to give our clients better insight into their ecosystems. Okay. I want to understand kind of the breakdown there because a professor, you know, an agency is very different than a SaaS business. So if you look at the past 12 months of revenue from Bazilla, what percent is professional service versus what percent SaaS? Well, it's about, it, it's all uh, recurring. Well, most of it is recurring just to over 90%. And uh, it's about 60% SaaS and 40% professional services. Okay. How, walk me through how the 40% professional services, how is that recurring? Typically that's like a setup fee or an onboarding or one re, one-off research well, it's product. All research. We're all listening research. Excuse me. I think we got a little disconnected there. Yeah. It's all what? It's, it's all research. We call it listening research. Um, our clients um, have us analyze the conversation for them in various models in order to understand better what people are saying about their, their brands, about their competition, about their, their uh, um, whole uh, business ecosystem, about their uh, target audiences and potential uh, areas to which they can uh, um, explore in order to widen their businesses. Okay. Now, ignoring the prof ignoring the professional services, what do people pay on average per month just for your SaaS offering? Well, it's it's per seat, and a seat is uh, um, a user is uh, roughly five hundred dollars a month. Okay. Um, so large companies can can go uh, um, all the way to uh, um, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month, and and uh, uh, very large companies, and then uh, or or government agencies, and um, uh, then small companies would would pay the more basic fees. Give me a sense, though. I mean, you guys are built for a specific kind of user. Are you really targeting enterprise accounts or one seat kind of new logos? Well, most of our clients are the large corporations uh, in the local market. That would be, uh, um, I guess, uh, medium-sized companies or smaller medium-sized companies in, in American terms. Um, our uh, international customers are medium companies. Uh, so, so I would I would say small enterprise. Okay. So, so typically, when someone signs up for you after you know a year or so, about how many team members do they have on the platform? Are we talking like two or two hundred? No, it's never 200 because usually it's it's actually um, the people who are using the platform are the the social media people, the digital people. Uh, so that depends on the the size of the team and the clients for the information within the organization can be in the hundreds because they get alerts and uh, notifications about uh, things that matter to their businesses. Okay, what I'm trying to get a sense of you have is the average kind of business signing up for you. Are they paying for two seats or ten seats or five hundred seats? Just on average, what is it? Would you say? Oh, I, I guess it would be like uh, between uh, um, three and 10 seats. Okay, fair enough. Very good. That's helpful. And then put this on a timeline for us. When did the company launch? We launched in uh, 2010. Um, and uh, uh, the business has been growing ever since. We uh, um, we were f initially funded, seed funded. Um, all in all, $1.6 million uh, um, last time funded in 2012. And uh, ever since, the company has been uh, uh, growing on its own. Uh, it's profitable and um, it's still growing. That's great. So when you when you say growth, I mean, over the past 12 months, what's the growth been? 
Well, the last 12 months have been phenomenal. The growth has been um, roughly uh, um, 40 to 50 percent, but that's because uh, we have become the sole uh, social listening platform for all of uh, um, Israel's government companies and government agencies. Um, so, so that's a, a big step forward for us, and that took us into uh, government agencies abroad as well. Well, uh, including in the states. Interesting. And so, over the past eight years since 2010, and really on a on a you know bootstrap budget, basically, what have you scaled to in terms of total customers using you? There are um, there are almost 300 uh, uh, companies. Well, we said how many users within a company. So that's the the, the recurrent business we have at the moment. Okay. So just to be clear, so you said there's about 300 kind of paying logos. Each one pays for maybe between three and 10 seats, depending on kind of the use case. So if we assume, assume a minimum there of three seats, that's 1500 per month times 300 customers. You can kind of triangulate to your monthly revenue of being somewhere around 450 grand per month. Is that about accurate? Yeah, it's around 400. It's okay. around 400. Fairly healthy. And then if you're going 50%, kind of year over year, that was around what, about 300% a year ago, or sorry, 300 grand a year ago? Yeah, something like that. And, and where is most of the growth coming from? Is it coming Is it coming from expanding the base of customers you already have, upselling them, or is it brand new customers altogether? Well, it's usually, uh, it, it's both. Uh, um, I think most of the growth in the past year was new customers. As I said, we, we, uh, we got into some b- very big tenders, so uh, it's new customers. Uh, but then the the growth in uh, SaaS and professional services is from existing customers, and that's been going on for years. Okay, so that four hundred thousand bucks per month you're doing today is that that's just your SaaS, correct? You then have professional service on top of that. No, that's all. That's all in all. Okay, and you said sixty percent then is SaaS. Well, so- yeah, a little bit, just because it's all recurring. So for for me, it's. Uh, um, it's 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 all in all. So that's the income. Well, well, but they are very different revenues. I mean, professional service is very different from a margin perspective than a SaaS business. They they look very different. So when you you know most people listening right now are they're going to say he well Yov is saying they're the professional service is recurring, but really no, they have to have a sales team to like sell new research reports every single month to make that recurring be recurring. So how do you get new professional services coming if you have no sales team selling it? Well, we have a sales team selling it, but uh, um, the, it's recurring because the analyzed products are also on a recurring basis and they don't need to be resold every month. Uh, I'll give a, an example. Um, um, all of our companies, all of our clients, not only get notifications and alerts from the system on a regular basis, they also get uh, analyzed reports on a regular basis in a standardized format, in, in several standardized formats. And this is something we do for them without, uh, it's a recurring order. It's uh, something that's yeah, but is, is there human Yeah, but is there human touch on that? Is there human analysis or is it like they click a button for a PDF download? No, th- there's always human analysis, and this is part of uh, my uh, my um, the, the things I believe in. I believe that the, um, in- real insight is is has to come from a, a human brain. Uh, so the system does a lot of the heavy lifting and brings it to the people in order to bring that that uh, um, valuable insight that lets them actually grow their businesses. Yep. So give me an example. You know, go- you mentioned your kind of big use case are governments. So how are, what do you mean if a government is trying to grow their business, what does that mean? Well, um, let's, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, Let's say that the ministry of education would like to listen to what parents, teachers, and students are saying in the social arena in order to give better services, in order to answer more correctly, um, to to, uh, design their offering more correctly to their target audiences. So that's their kind of business, okay? It's not not a a profitable business, but it's a business that needs to tend to the needs of their customers. Okay, got it. Churn is critical in a SaaS business. What's your churn today? Well, um, the, the net is around minus 10. Okay, so so um, and then it's actually it's actually becoming lower and lower through the years. It's pretty amazing because um, the service itself is uh, um, is already so fine tuned that it it actually there is very little churn. It's about uh, one point two. Okay, and that's on a logo basis or revenue basis. That's on a revenue basis. Okay, so one point two revenue churn. That's per month or per year. That's per year. Okay, per year. And is that gross or net? That is 
Um, wait, let me think about it for a minute. Um, <laughs> growth. Growth. Okay. So when you add an expansion on top of that, you're above hundred percent in net revenue retention per year. Exactly. Yeah. Which would obviously, that's also what drives churn to net negative 10%, which is great. Um, tell me more about how you're signing up these customers. I mean, where are you finding them? What's the onboarding look like? Well, first of all, we have to remember that we operate our, our base market. The Israeli market is, is a very small market and we are by far the leader in this market. So it's a lot of word of mouth. Um, we have a, a pretty small but efficient sales team that brings in the big customers and we have some uh, uh, um, uh, marketing, online marketing going on. Um, that how much you have, the, like how much are you spending per month on online marketing? Oh, um, the, um, maybe two thousand dollars a month. Okay, so that's that's easy. And then on the team, the sales team, what's the total team size today, and how many of them are sales? Total size is about twenty five, and we have uh, uh, a sales team of four. Um, and All and based in can, Israel. All based in Israel. I love that. Very good. And then what do you assume, you know, your economics are so healthy. These numbers can get dangerous and I'm about to ask, but what do you assume your lifetime value is on these accounts? Um, we, uh, uh, we see a growing lifetime, um, lifetime per customer and the lifetime value uh, right now is, uh, uh somewhere around $7,000. How much? Lifetime. Um, $7,000, I guess, you know, in, in terms of, uh, um, not seven thousand dollars. It's uh, it's about uh, three point five years per customer. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. So if I take so if I take you know three point five years times you know twelve months here, that's about forty two months. And if you said on average that a customer might exactly. pay for three seats at five hundred bucks a month, I can take forty two months times fifteen hundred to get an LTV of about sixty three grand. Exactly. Okay, that, that's that, like that's that. around around right. We we calculated at around sixty five. Okay, fair enough. That's very good. And then uh, gross margins kind of in line with the other SaaS companies. You're around what 80, 85 percent in the SaaS. Yeah, well, well, that's why in, I'm asking, in the SaaS, right? We're so around eighty percent. You, you, you're and the professional services what? Professional services are lower. Professional services are, are, are around forty uh, percent. Yeah. So, so uh, it's it's around eighty percent and forty percent. Yep. Not bad. And obviously, those two play nicely together. One drives retention of the other, which makes good sense. Any plans to raise additional capital or no? Not at the moment. Actually, the company is doing pretty well uh, in growth and um, is uh, able to to uh, to develop its next generation product as we speak. Um, uh, funded by what we make. Um, I guess we will be looking maybe in a year or two um, to expand the whole business model. And that may, that may require us to, to, uh, to get an additional funding. You're doing about 4.8 million, call it 5 million bucks per year right now, professionals first plus SaaS. If someone came in and offered you that, you know, four or five X so say 20 million bucks, would you sell the company? Um, I think not. Um, and it's a very general question because my question is always, how can we make it much bigger together so that somebody would have to, uh, um, would have to strategically be a partner that, uh, um, in joint forces will, uh, aid us in making this, uh, this whole company a much bigger uh, enterprise. Yeah. Very good. So, Yo, let's, uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? My current business book is uh, um, is the the new book by Yuval Noah Harari. It's uh, it's not per se a business book, but it's uh, uh, twenty one thoughts um, about the twenty the twenty first century, and it's fascinating. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Yeah, um, lately I've been looking at Ran Sarig. Ran Sarig is the CEO of Datarama. They they just uh, sold their company to Salesforce for eight 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 hundred fifty million dollars and intriguing to me how how they uh, pushed through since 2012 to make their business grow well 800 million bucks would be intriguing to a lot of people uh, number three of what's your favorite online tool for building your business uh i guess it would have to be slack number four how many hours of sleep do you get every night six to seven okay so not bad and what's your situation married single kiddos married Three children. They're not children anymore. Three <laughs> dogs and a cat. Holy mackerel. You're a busy man. And how old are you? I'm 52. 52. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? I would, um, to ask for help, I would definitely have me as a 20-year-old 
listen more to other people and learn from their experience. Guys, ask for help. There you have it. Launched Bazilla back in 2010, so eight years ago. Now doing about five million bucks in annual revenue. That's about 50% year over year from the same run rate in September 2017. Again, last year. Doing this on a, you know, with small amount of capital, relatively speaking, 1.5 million bucks into the company. They're serving about 300 paying customers that buy three seats, maybe up to 10 seats on average at 500 bucks a seat. They've got net a negative revenue chart of negative 10% and well north of 100% net revenue retention annually with just, you know, churning 1.2% revenue gross underneath that. So healthy economics based in Israel with 25 people, lifetime value about 30, 42 months or about 65 grand in terms of dollars. You have, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you.